Okay, we're back with Blackthorn, and this is just showcasing some of the riffs we've done, some of the structure we've made and worked on together, and we're just sharing the writing experience with you guys. So I was just jamming around on these two riffs. And I was thinking like we need a, like an ending thing, because if we're thinking uh, with the drummer in mind, I had this idea, yeah. then some power chords. So. Then trying to loop it around like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because then that gives um, that gives uh, Vegar a bit more time and a bit of like opportunity to add more like percussive da 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 da, um, and stuff like that. So the riff I was thinking uh, as a complete riff. You know, have like a two-part ending. So it ascends the first time. Yeah. Then, da, 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 da. and then from there, yeah. that F sharp chord works quite nicely. Yeah. So it can, it's, um, it flows quite nicely. It's a bit yeah. technical and difficult to play, like because of the chord changes. But it's something that can definitely be um, executed with a bit more practice. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Also, I start by making uh, like this the foundation of something, and uh, when I I can barely play it myself mm. and record it, and that's what you're hearing on the, on the take. It's not very uh, good uh, performance, but uh, it works for a, a demo and arranging. Mm. And um, when it comes to like these turnarounds that are more difficult, technical you have to like practice them for a while before you can go into recording if or you're just stumbling through it and it don't sound good so um sometimes like in uh, cases like this even i practice yeah yeah no, because i'm not good at that uh, at usual i don't practice guitar i don't play <laughs> guitar i just use it when i need to so um in these cases i'm just looping uh, the riff and practicing practicing and then um uh, i record it when i'm feeling like slightly comfortable or confident that i'll uh, pass um, yes that's that's right because i found like recording yourself is the best practice for playing in time getting tight and yeah. making sure that your playing is you know really on point because you've got yeah. to hang on to the click and everything, and it requires that level of practice to go through all of the chord changes as well. And um, just making sure your playing is down. And then con continuing, um, going back to what you are saying earlier with like the fast bit, um, like just, just jamming around after the... You know, have like, um, have like just like a section where it kind of like brings itself back, but becomes more... Uh, dissonant and still keep the mood, but have like a bit more, um, have like a bit more sinister kind of vibe yeah. going on. Yeah, vibe, I like that. Yeah, so I'll just. Did maybe yeah. um, take that riff you and could add to that uh, riff as well. That was a good idea because. Uh, what I liked about your bass lines on uh, the other riffs is that they call in that uh, sinister... Um, for me, it's like uh, I um, associate with uh, like old computer games or uh, electronic uh, stuff or computer music and that, but uh, it's also a very useful and uh, much used uh, trick in um, uh, contemporary music, in uh, film music, in uh, all kinds of music that uh, you have uh, two instruments doing two different things. So I like this part when we play your uh, uh, Creeping Doom riff, mm. uh, where um, uh, one guitar just do the chugging and one guitar do the riff and you have a bass line under there that is going interesting places. And also in parts like this, the last, da, 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 it, it's like a short, short little loop of a melody. And under that, it could be a larger melody. 
Um, so um, I think uh, it's a good pl thing to do with um, with the P grip also to to make a variation of it. Yes. Yeah, that's um, that's cool, and that's like give me some ideas, like dun -dun 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 -dun, and like having some bass parts, for, like do 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 do, like have like a lot of movement going on in the bass as well. Yeah. And, um, do you know what? It's it's interesting because I kind of when it comes to like having two guitars doing different things, it just reminds me of um, Emperor's second album, Anthems, and okay. uh, the way the way um, the way Isan writes, because it's because at some points there's two different guitars as well, and um. I like that I, that idea as well. When you've got all these different, you've got the guitars. You know, they're both working with the right chords and in key, but everything's still distinct. I think that's really cool. Um, yeah. so that's that's cool. I'll def, I'll play around with the bass parts of the dun it dun it dun it. See what I can uh, come up with as well. Because yeah. that's um, like going back to our first conversation, talking about like bass parts. It's like bass parts need to be interesting and have their own personality yeah. as well. Like um, I kind of treat them like a third guitar sometimes. Yeah. You Not should, one. I think, it's like, why should that be, a, if you weigh up one guitar, one guitar and a bass and the drums and vocals and everything, uh, I think um, it mostly should be pretty equal. Um, I can argue in the later years that I want to put more emphasis on uh, vocals and drums. Mm. Um, but uh, for like a general rule, it should be like you should uh, put work into the bass as well. You should put work into the second guitar. Uh, if you're not uh, after something really simple, but um, you you should uh, use what you have available, uh, so you can um, generate more uh, uh, diversity in your music. I think. For sure, yeah, because that's. Yeah, it's just going back to what we were talking about before, where every song needs to have a unique identity and serve a purpose. Yeah. And yeah. its own thing, and then that's how great songs are made. That's why so many great songs are distinct. Yeah, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it's just you know, that's Hallowed right. Thy, yeah, Hallowed be thy name. Iron Maiden, very distinct. Iron Man, yeah. Black Sabbath. Um, what's that other one? Paranoid. You know, going back to like the super yeah. early stuff. Uh, Sad but true. Uh, Creeping death. Um, all the songs you remember. All the songs you remember are different from uh, all other songs in some way. So. They have to like uh, make their own right or something. Exactly. Going back to riffs. Uh, I'm just trying to think because I I like that. I want that to loop. Da -na -na -da -na. Yeah, I like the idea of putting a um, uh, what do you call them? Um, Thrilling. Thrilling, thriller, thriller. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, because it's uh, like an airy um, feeling thing, so uh, that riff uh, fits that. Mm. Uh, and I also think if we're putting vocals on it, like it's kind of a refrain also, uh, it will be cool to have that. Yeah. To emphasize, and uh, we could have like uh, we can have the idea to put something like that there and play around with it. Sometimes I think it's cool if there's something leading up to that, um, <laughs> uh, like a. But we can play around with it, and, and if it's put there in a rhythmical, uh, cool place, also, and yeah. uh, also uh, we can try out like uh, two guitars doing two different tones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, like a like a harmonized kind of thing. Because like when you said that lead, yeah. In... Yeah. Wow, that's too many. That's too many beats. But that. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um... Dun, 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 dun. I'll have to record that one with two guitars to make sure that properly fits, but uh, I'm quite digging this. Yeah. Oh. Something up there that makes uh, like a lifting creepy uh, feeling. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, these kind of like... Those... Nice tones. Yeah, those, um, all these like... Minor thirds diminish sounds. 
about this rhythm. Like do 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 do. Oh yeah yeah. Like that kind yeah, of. Just yeah, just give it a like uh, time for the sugars to be in between and end it with da 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 Oh wait, no, it's not. Oh, it's difficult. It can work. It can work. We'll make it work. I will make that work. Uh, I think that will be cool as well. I think uh, that also is a little on purpose to break off the four fourth rhythmic mm. with uh, with triplets or overlay uh, four four with the uh, three four. Mm. Uh, so you have the same length of the beat, but uh, you divide it differently, and all this uh, merge together. Yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah, I think that would be cool. And um, if we make like playthrough videos and we edit like a really cool video together and then um, see if we can get a drum drum takes in there as well. I think yeah. that would be a really dynamic video. Yeah. And um, I talked to Vega yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, and he's uh, with us. Um, he, he, <laughs> we have put a lot of files up on the server and he got access to the bin. But uh, he said like, I don't understand this anyway, so we need to talk. Um, <laughs> Not the computer part, but uh, what is what uh, of the files. So um, I made a new mix for him, I think, and mm -hmm. sent him that. And um, we talked a bit about the idea with uh, the Celtic Frostish uh, uh, beat, and um, he really liked that as well. And with this, uh, we talked about that the drummer should also um, not only play straight, but have riffs in the music um and he was uh, uh he was uh, very glad to to take part so i think um within this weekend or maybe next he will record drum parts for us so we'll have something uh, uh real drums to work with um he also said that he had a midi setup if we wanted to use uh, samples or uh, get midi from him but uh, i think it's easy anyway if we figure that uh, his set is uh, we need to change the pitch of the snare or anything like that we can do it easily in our programs um his set was like uh, rigged for mid tempo and faster and slower parts so it should cover the um, the need for this song i think mm. so uh, <laughs> i really look forward to hear what he's um he's making up for us and I'll, he'll also do different uh, takes and different um uh rhythms uh, different uh, try out different ideas so we'll get like uh, two or three takes from him uh, which we can edit and put into the song i'm really excited to be working with vega because um He's one very, very talented drummer. He is. He is in. <laughs> yeah, so um, just for the viewers, we've got uh, Veal Vega. He is the drummer who used to play in Keep of Callison. He played in Golgoroth Live, and he's also the mastermind of Hordam Rife. So he's going to be doing the drums for this project, which is super fucking exciting. So let's give him a few ideas we can work with. That kind of da -da 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 riff and then having some kind of like trilling going on as well as the those like kind of like stabby style endings and i think yep. um going back to this riff is like a nice transition to um go to a more faster section maybe we could like take it a step back make it a bit more kind of like um floating yeah, yeah. You know, have like some kind of like soft spoken word thing, let the drums start like add, uh, maybe add a few samples and there's some like like dark sounding bells or something. 